Well, good day, everyone. Uh, today, I wanted to take you through some of my favorite little applications that I use on my M1 Mac. And I do use them even on my Mac Pro and also my uh, MacBook Pro, apart from one of the apps that I'll show you, which is just totally uh, for silicon. Um, the first app that I wanted to show you today, oh, before I do that, actually, uh, I have purchased all of these myself. I'm not sponsored in any way. I haven't got coupon codes or anything for these. Uh, so they are paid out of them with my own money. Uh, the first one that I'd like to show you is this great little application called Cleaner One Pro. Uh, it, and I noticed too it's on special at the moment uh, for $14.99. Now, these are US prices um, uh, and it's $19.99 uh, if you want to pay the full price. Now this is a subscription so uh, you do have to pay for this each year but I love this so much that I've paid for that. Uh, I sort of accept the fact that it's on a subscription based model. Uh, but let me just show you the app and show you how, how nice and powerful uh, this app is actually is. So if I go over to the next screen, and what I do is to launch it, you'll see there's a little icon at the top up here that just says Mem. Now if I click on that, it will bring up this little dialog box that you see here. Now the first thing that I do is I use the memory management of this app. It's, it's absolutely brilliant the way that it works, because at the moment uh, it's telling me that there's 6.33 gigabytes free. Now I can optimize this, and I do this before I say use programs like Final Cut or Photoshop, something that's going to be quite RAM intensive, because the Mac for some reason doesn't let let the RAM go, the memory go all the time. Now I've noticed once you've got this uh, installed though, it does look at it every so often, like when you close an app, it will free the memory up again. But all I do is, the first thing I'll do is optimize the memory. Now I've just done this in a test, so it may not be much of an improvement, but I'll optimize it. Now it does take probably about a minute to optimize, but let me optimize it and we'll look at the results. Okay, so you can see the results there. So it's dropped down to 3.5 gigabytes now being used. It also shows you your CPU usage at the time and also your network usage here as well and how many junk files you've got on your computer. Now you can clean them straight away, but what I like to do is use the system optimizer and I'll show you that. So if I click on this system optimizer down here, it opens up this uh, dialog box. Now the thing that you do first with this is you have to scan your uh, computer. So I'll click on scan. Now you don't have to do this all the time. I just do this once a week. Uh, but if I click on scan, it will go through a whole range of things. Now this again takes a minute or so to go through. So what's wonderful now is it does give you an immediate list over here about what it's checked. And there's junk files. It says you can delete 2.96 gigabytes of files. It's found these big files, which are 20, 28 gigabytes. It looks for duplicate files, similar photos, etc., uh, etc. Et now, if you want to do control of all of these, you can just click on junk files over here, and then you can select what you want to delete. Uh, and this basically finds the things that it can safely delete. So I could remove this 2.96 0.96 gigabytes of, uh, of uh, junk file that's sitting there. So I will remove it. And you'll see now that it's cleaning junk files uh, and it'll find what it can safely delete and it's deleted 984 megabytes. Now I could have deleted more by selecting other things through the side down here as well. Uh, so that works great. Big files just looks for things that are larger than say one gigabyte, etc., or larger than 500 and it finds those on this side down here. Your disk map, you can look for a folder and it gives you a visual representation of what's on that disk. Uh, Startup manager, you can stop things from starting up automatically if you think you don't want it to, rather than going through your system preferences, you can do it this way as well. Um, duplicate files is like I said, it'll look for things that are duplicates of images uh, that it will find somewhere. Um, you've also got similar photos where it will look for things that are the same and you can delete those as well. App manager, I do use all the time because if, if you want to delete an app uh, that's on your computer, you can click onto this and then delete it and it will delete all the associated files files that are with that. So that's fantastic. Um, file shredder is a great uh, thing to uh, just drop something in and then it makes sure that it's deleted securely from your uh, computer as well. So that's great too. The more tools is just more things that are available uh, to purchase through this app. So that's the first app that I wanted to show you. Um, and I, like I said, I use that all the time and I love the memory management particularly and also the way it can find junk files and just delete those off your computer. So let me bring up the second file uh, that we're going to look at, and it's called I. I think it's iStatistica, uh, and this is great for monitoring things. I do use two of these, and I'll sort of explain why uh, in a minute. But this is another program uh, that you buy. I'm not sure what it would actually cost. Let me just check. 
So it's five ninety nine if you want to buy it, but there's also a, a pro version as well uh, that you can pay more for. I haven't uh, paid for the pro version. I, I've just got the standard one, and it gives me enough uh, information that uh, I want to use. Now, the great thing about this is, uh, again, let me show you how this works. So again, if I come over to this monitor, you can see that the icon is up the top here. And if I click on this, uh, it will bring up this dialog box. But let me open this up in a separate window so I can show you how this uh, looks uh, wider. All right, so this is the dialog box that comes up when you open the app instead of just using it from the menu up the top. Now, this is great too because it will show you um, your RAM usage, it shows you your processor usage through here as well. It also shows, uh, shows how much your uh, hard disk has been used. And it gives you some interesting information like networking, disk IO speed, Bluetooth, what's connected, how much RAM your apps are using at the time, and how much processor is being used. And I like this. I think this is also very good. And it does give you some sort of fan usage uh, as well. So let me show you the third app that we're going to have a look at. Uh, and this app here is called iStat Menus. Uh, and this is the application here. I think it's around about uh, $10 or something like that. Or Well, there you go. It's $14.95 if you want a family pack. Uh, it's $13.99 if you wanted to buy a single license. I bought the family pack. Uh, I don't think that this, this isn't limited. You don't rent this or uh, like a yearly thing that you just pay it for once. Uh, and that's the way I've done it. Uh, now, let me show you how this app actually works because it's a little bit different than the iStatistica that I just showed you a minute ago. All right, so the way this works is what I like about this is it brings up, you can determine what you want to show in the menu. And I like to bring up these icons that are up the top up here. And you'll notice it's got, it shows you your hard drives when you connect through here. Uh, and then you'll also see processes that are being written down the bottom down here. It'll show you how much is being used. Uh, I like to look at CPU usage as well, and you get graphs for that. Now, if you scroll over things, it gives you different looks uh, that you can sort of see, which works great. And it gives you loads over 24 hours, seven days and 30 days. Uh, if I click on memory usage, you can check down here that at the moment I'm using 15% uh, on my uh, pressure, the memory pressure. It also shows uh, that over a period of time what your memory has been like, how much active has been used, wired, etc. And it also tells you your swap memory uh, usage as well. Uh, and it'll give you your page ins and page outs uh, that you can check uh, as well with that. So the next app that I want to show you is TG Pro. Now, this is a really important app because sometimes uh, your fan will not turn on these Macs. And this might particularly be useful if you're using something like a MacBook Pro, uh, the Apple Silicon one, where it may tend to uh, slow the processes down, thermal throttle. So you can stop that from happening by using this app. And also, I do like the fact that, you know, if, if your temperature did get up really, really high, well, then you can put this on, If you, for instance, if you were rendering you could put the fans up to full, etc. So let me just show you what this uh, app is. It's called TG Pro, uh, and it's up to 2.5. Um, and I've purchased this, and it was $14.985 uh, to purchase. Uh, it is a one-off um, purchase, and I think at the moment it's actually, uh, they're saying 50% off, it's on sale. I don't know whether that's permanently on there, uh, but I'll show you the app in use. So what you do is up the top up here, uh, you can open this up and it does show everything in this little menu. But let me show you the main window so I can show you how this works uh, in the main window. Okay, so this is this is the main window. And what it does, it will show you different things like all of the cores, the temperatures individually. Uh, it'll tell you your CPU temperatures, GPU, it will tell you as well, hard drive temperatures, logic board, power supply, and wireless as well. Like it gives you basically everything um, that, that's, that's available on this. But what I do love about it is that you can ch do settings. Now, if you click on this little button over here, what this will do is you can determine when your main fan uh, comes on for the highest CPU for any sensor and also the SSD. And then you can put a temperature that you think you would like it to turn on. I noticed Max Eur have said that he'd had his uh, temperature on, on his Mac Mini go up to 90 degrees Celsius and he was worried about that. Uh, and he was the one that suggested this actually. Um, and so what you can do is you can say at 85 degrees Celsius, you can turn the fans onto 100%. So what it will do, it will monitor that and you can determine what's safe yourself. Um, but let me just go out of this. What you can also do is turn on max and the fan will turn on. Now I don't know whether you'll hear this, but you'll notice if I click on max, 
All right, so the fans have turned on. And they're going at maximum now, which is 4499. So they've they've hit maximum and it will cool your machine down. You'll notice actually it did drop down in, in, in temperatures there as well. Uh, if you go system as well, it will just basically turn everything off uh, and it works uh, at just the 1700 RPM that you see. I like leaving it on auto max because what it will do, it will turn on that fan on those settings that I've actually used. Okay, so the next app that I want to show you is one I absolutely love because this works on my iPhone and it works on my iPad and also my computers. So it basically is a cop and paste mechanism. Now I'll show you what the app is. Uh, it's this one here and it's called just copy and paste smarter. Now you can get it from the app store. The only thing is now, I believe that it's now a subscription based model. When I purchased it, uh, cause I've had this for a while, it wasn't based on a subscription. So mine uh, was a one-off payment and I've never had to pay for it again, but I love it that much though. I would pay for the subscription of this. Uh, it's not much at all. It's only a few dollars I think per year. Um, you just have to check that out cause I can't remember what the full cost is. Um, but let me show you how this works. I've got uh, this thing called P up the top. Now if I click on that, what it will do is I'll click it and then if I click over to here, you'll notice what happens is it brings up this paste dialer box down the bottom uh, and that's fantastic. So anything that I copy off anywhere uh, will link into here. You can copy photos, you can do all different things. Um, let me just try one. I'll just see if I can add a photo or something. So let me just copy the screenshot. All right, now if I go back to paste, you'll notice now it's sitting over here. Now, if I double click, that will paste it into whatever application that I want. I use this all the time for emails, copying email addresses, copying um, HTML addresses off web pages and things like that. Now, the beauty is, like I said, this will work on your iPhone, iPad, uh, any computer you've got it on. And if you use it, it syncs all of those copy and paste together onto the one machine. And that's great. So if I'm using my iPhone, I can just copy something and then I know it will appear on my desktop under paste as well. So that is brilliant the way that that works. Um, and I really do, uh, really do love that application. It's one thing, like I said, I'd pay for straight away. So the next app I use is a, a program called Silicon and it checks your computer for what is actually Silicon apps, what is native to the M1 apps. Like I said, I don't use this on my other computers, but I definitely use it on this one. I like to check every so often and see what's been updated. Uh, you can do it through your activity monitor. I mean, if, if uh, let me just launch that and I'll show you. Uh, you can do it through your activity monitor. If you go to applications, you can check there by kind and it will show you on the side there uh, that's the way to do it but I, I don't like that I don't think it's very clear so I've purchased this uh, program called silicon so this is the website uh, that you can get it from and again I'll leave the link down below um, and it works like this and I'll show you actually in the app how it functions uh, so let me open up the app and I'll give you an example of how this actually works so if you open the app up this is what you get uh, and you can scan uh, the applications folder, you say uh, only scan the applications folder. If you take that out, it'll scan your whole computer. I usually exclude Apple applications because they tend to be always Apple Silicon now. Um, but it's up to you whether you wanted to leave that on. Uh, if I say exclude Apple applications, I can then start scanning. And what it does immediately is it checks your computer for what is native. And you can see anything that's yellow is uh, still being used in, in Rosetta 2. Uh, anything in green is native uh, to this. Now you can also filter this if you want to. You can say show only Intel apps, or you can also just show uh, Apple Silicon apps. And this will take you through about what has been converted uh, to Apple Silicon. Uh, like I've just noticed that Office has just been updated uh, just yesterday actually to Apple Silicon. So this is a great way of checking what is native on your computer. And I really do love using this app. Uh, and it's, I sort of check it every day to see if anything has been updated. Um, but yeah, great little app. Now the last uh, app it is I wanted to discuss because uh, I had some issues with uh, Chrome using an incredible amount of memory and processors. And what Chrome does, I've researched this online too. Um, I think I more had a whole discussion about this as well. Uh, it uses amazing amounts of processors when it does updates. And the problem is you can't stop it doing it. So if you've used anything from Google, uh, those apps, what it does is it does that. And I had Chrome installed and I did notice that uh, if you check the activity monitor, uh, and I'll show you the actual area where it seems to affect. Um, under here, if you checked onto memory, 
uh, you'll notice that there's this thing called Windows Server. Now that went up at the moment, it's, it's been used by um, other applications that I've got, but that was going up to ridiculously high levels. Uh, and that was caused by Chrome uh, and it was slowing the processor down. Uh, and it really did affect things like when you were doing Final Cut and things like that. So I've deleted Chrome and everything and I've brought up this uh, another browser that I found that uh, it works the same way as Chrome. Uh, it, it, I believe it does flash and everything just exactly the same. And there's a, a couple of different versions of this around, but I've found that Brave works great. Now, it's not native. I know um, Firefox has just brought out a native version. I have got that as well. But I did like the way that this works. So I've downloaded this new version of uh, Chrome, and it's called, well, it's just called Brave. So let me just open this up, and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is the application itself. Uh, the interesting thing too, it does it, it blocks things like ads and things like that from coming through and you can change uh, the settings for that if you'd like to make it through. But it is loading my extensions like TubeBuddy and things like that. So it does sort of work exactly the same way that Chrome works. Um, if you look at it, uh, basically it will tell you things like it gives you the ability to take back control so you only update this uh, when you want to uh, and that's the great thing you can check for updates unlike how Chrome actually works uh, it blocks things like grabbing ads and trackers and things like that uh, which is great it's blocking harmful ads and trackers uh, you can browse more privately with tour as well if you wanted to go that way you can even earn rewards I don't know how that works but uh, it, it works as well so that's something that I've just downloaded uh, and got Got rid of Chrome and I'm just going to see how that works in the meantime due to the fact of how much resources Chrome was doing and you couldn't stop it there was no way of basically turning that off apart from running terminal scripts and things like that so let me know what your favorite apps are I'd love to know down below uh, let me know what you think about these apps as well uh, like I said I haven't been paid to do any of this I've paid for all of these apps myself so it's not a sponsored uh, post in any way at all apart from that guys I'll see you all in the next video bye for now